But before we get into our topic, Father Seraphim, do you mind uh, introducing yourself? I'm really excited to have you on today. I'm Father Seraphim Gazzetti, pastor of St. John Chrysostom Church, actually a mission in Lakewood, Colorado. We have been in existence for 11 and a half years and uh, have grown to just a little over 100 people total. We get about 60, 70 on a Sunday. And if I remember correctly, you're currently uh, serving at an Antiochian parish, but I don't think you originated with the Antiochian Archdiocese. No, I I uh, was and am an OCA priest currently on loan to the Antiochian Archdiocese and have been for um, basically since 1996. Okay. All right, so uh, today's topic is about retreats, and you just had a retreat recently, which is why we, uh, why you know, I asked you to be on here. So um, I don't know exactly how you want to go about this. I'm I'm not really a journalist, as I tell people on a regular basis. This is just me and you chatting and having a conversation. So I think the first thing I'm anxious to hear about, if you don't mind, is is what happened this past weekend. We had a lovely retreat. Father Joseph Honeycutt came up from Houston. Yeah, he spent several days here and he presented several talks uh, based on his latest book, which is Fire from Ashes, um, Perpetual Conversion. And so he gave some stories and gave some inspiring talks. This was the eighth annual we as i said we've been in existence for 11 years uh, we started having a retreat our second year in existence we had to take a hiatus as we moved from a storefront to our permanent location right now but uh, we in, intend to continue and have this as an annual event the retreats, we've had Father Chad Hatfield, we've had Father John Bear, we've had Father Jeremy Davis and others here, um, some several times. And Father Joseph um, came, uh, it starts Friday night with an opening talk. I don't know if you can really call them retreats. They're not workshops, they are talks, they are inspirational, they are informational. They are here, not just for our parish, we have people coming from all over the Denver metro area. And uh, the talks vary depending on the speaker. We've had talks on marriage, we've had talks on, mostly we focus on Christian life, that is, uh, really what the goal is to present and help people be better Christians. Did you start out with a plan to make it annual or did that kind of happen? Like how did that become a routine? We actually did start with the idea of having it as an annual event. One of the things that I noticed in Colorado is that while we have some excellent clergy here with educated clergy, uh, good speakers, what we have not had was really a tie to the seminaries and to the current writers who are known and who present orthodoxy to the world as well. And so that was the idea from the beginning that we would have informational people from outside of the local region come and talk about Orthodox Christian life to the people here so that we would have a connection to the church at large, not just through PLCs and the Archdiocesan Convention and so forth, but by actually having people come here and represent either the seminaries or the uh, the outside world 
so that um, we wouldn't feel insular, we wouldn't feel out here. The Rocky Mountains are sort of outside of the scope of everything. People fly through Denver all the time, but they rarely leave the airport. <laughs> and so uh, it, it creates a little insular um, approach. So my thought was to try and expand the horizons of people here. So I know you just had Father Joseph Honeycutt this past weekend. You mentioned a few others that you've had. Do you have um, some kind of a theme or topic in mind? Do you just try to find a speaker and let them? Um, how do you go about this process when you're doing it every year of figuring out what's going to be happening uh, at the next one? Uh, I prefer to leave the topic to the person. I try to find a person with something to say. And uh, I prefer to leave it to them. Very often they'll ask me, what do you want me to speak about? What do you want to speak about? <laughs> we go back and forth a little bit. Uh, normally I try to, again, focus on something about Christian life. Uh, whether it is within the marriage, within just uh, personal spirituality, uh, whatever really is the focus, uh, whether we talk about what the fathers have said or a particular father or, or simply just an overview of even life experience sometimes. So I find that every person has something to say based on their own experience based on their own knowledge their reading their studying their meditation their prayer life and so no matter even if it's the same topic it's a different approach with every person and so we can um easily invite people sometimes over you know to repeat sometimes just from everywhere uh, to come and speak. I'm also curious about, um, you said this is the eighth annual for the, uh, those that may not have heard that. If it's the eighth annual, that means it seems like something about this annual retreat is working. You're seeing some kind of results from it in your congregation. Absolutely. I can only talk so much. I can only preach so much. At some point, it is nice to hear something similar or even something new to me that I can then preach about and, and reinforce to the people. Uh, granted, as I said, people come from other parishes to come to this retreat to hear the speakers but mostly it is my people. They are the ones who come in, in as the majority uh, attenders. And for them, it, it reinforces and helps. I hear back, we have Bible studies, we have discussions, we have book discussions, uh, we have classes. And I hear back, uh, sometimes even years later, Oh, yes, so-and-so said this, and it really resonated with me, and now you're saying this, and I can put these two things together, and uh, this is really helpful, and, and um, this, is, this is Christianity, and it has helped me. So no matter what, uh, the people who come, I have yet to hear anyone say, boy, that was a lousy speaker. Uh, and it was a waste of time to come to the retreat. Um, no one has ever said that. Thank God we've had good speakers, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do try and, and invite people who speak well. Um, so, but that, that's the, the core is to inspire people, especially with Lent coming up to do a little more, to do a little more reading perhaps, to read one of the speaker's books or to read something that they recommend, uh, to give people food for Lent 
beyond what often everybody gets focused on on this part of the Bible or or this particular writer to broaden horizons and make them and me better Christians. You know, it's interesting that you you brought this up about how much you value the presence of these speakers. I don't know if you're aware of this or how many people know this, but at our website for the Antioch Missions and Evangelism, and the website is uh, www.missionsandevangelism.com. We have four pillars that we categorize everything under. Uh, and the fourth pillar um, was added recently. It's, it's actually semi-new. And we that fourth pillar is called pastoral. And under the pastoral pillar is where we put retreats because we see retreats, even if, when it's not led by the priest, such as you, Father Seraphim, bringing in someone, it's there to us to enhance your pastoral ministry. So it's aiding you in how you're you know, caring for your flock there at the parish. And you seem to really understand that. And so it's, it's, a, it's refreshing to hear that we're on the same page on how retreats help you with your ministry. Um, sometimes it's, you can, you know, there's lots of other things that retreats do, but that's really what it's doing is reinforcing you, reinvigorating you, giving you some deeper zeal, giving you some new perspective. All of our, everyone needs to be edified, even our clergy, right? And so you get to Absolutely. Take, take part in that. Absolutely. One of the things that when I was a young priest, I covered a very extensive territory because there weren't a lot of parishes around. And I missed, having come out of seminary, I missed having information presented to me because we didn't have retreats. We didn't have speakers. And it was years later on, uh, not, not really until I was back on the East Coast and close to the seminaries again, that I was able to get people to come and speak and, and do that. Uh, uh, it's always a struggle, especially on a mission parish, to find funds to pay for this, to pay for uh, the plane, the hotel, the, the, uh, the stay, uh, as well as to give you know, at least a small honorarium to the to the speaker. We have been fortunate that uh, the parish has uh, accepted the burden of of making up the funds uh, and to allow these speakers to fly in. Uh, I have been on other parishes that were not as willing, and so I I give. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, kudos to the people in my parish for their willingness to support this endeavor. Uh, we really never uh, are in the black. We're always in the red at the end of, of the retreat. So we always have to supply additional funds. I have, thank God, um, some donors that are willing to help out, but that has again taken time to develop. We started off without that, but that willingness has, I believe, really produced fruits. My last question for you, and um, I don't think we have any questions, so we'll probably end with this and then anything else that you want to say is, um, you know, we probably have a number of clergy who who like this idea, but they're they haven't begun, they haven't gotten started. Can you offer any kind of baby steps on on moving forward with this, um, or or maybe just some a little bit little bit of your experience and wisdom that you've you've gained through the last eight years? I started basically by cold calling Saint Vladimir's and saying who can come out, help with a retreat, and perhaps not cost me an arm and a leg. Maybe they can combine some other work for the seminary at the same time. Um, and Father Chad came out and 
did exactly that. Uh, it's when I was a young priest, I had the opportunities of getting Father Alexander Schmemann or Father John Meindorf, but I never did because I never thought of somehow combining it with other work that they would do. I always thought, oh, this horrible cost is going to be all on the shoulders of my parish. We're ba barely making it as we are. We can't afford. And then I found that the seminaries were very happy. St. Tithon, St. Uh, Vladimir's, Holy Cross, they were all very happy to try and work with me to get their people to come. Uh, and so I would encourage anyone, contact the seminaries, see who's willing to come. Some will say no, but others will say yes and try and work and come to help teach and perhaps also recruit for the seminary. And that I have always found a blessing. Yeah, I think that's that's good encouragement to remember these these uh, institutions like seminaries, they, they want to help out. And so if they can make it work, they probably will. Uh, so yeah. they, we shouldn't assume that it's just, it's impossible if we don't have the funds. Right. And yeah. uh, much, much later, Father Alexander Schmemann complained to me, you never invited me. I never thought I could afford you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and missed opportunities as a result. So I think that's a good, the good lesson there is if we don't ask, we don't find out. Yeah. We have to ask and see. And, and there probably are some that maybe we can't afford, but the, there's others that we can. So uh, let's not miss out on those opportunities. Well, do you have any parting thoughts on retreats before we wrap up here? We, uh, we do very simple. We do a Friday night. Um, have some coffee, have, uh, have some, you know, bagels or whatever. Sunday, uh, Saturday morning, we do not provide breakfast. Again, just a little coffee and, uh, and some donuts or whatever. We do try and have a lunch. None of that is very expensive, 100 maybe $200, depending on how many people are there. We've had anywhere from 15 to over 100 uh, at various years. And it's not that expensive. We can do it. Anyone can do it. And then we end in time for Vespers and that's it. Uh, the expense in terms of the, the church location, uh, is not great. All of it is, is mostly for, for flight hotel and honorary. And it is doable. Well, that's good to hear. So that's some good news. I'm excited to hear that you guys are been going eight years strong and that you had Father Joseph Honeycutt, uh, who is a member of the Department of Missions Evangelism, for those who don't know that, and that we offer several uh, retreats. Uh, and the one that you had him come out with, I've, I've only heard good things about, about that retreat. Very much. And, and, and I have to thank the Department of Missions because they actually covered most of his cost, including his flight and his hotel. So I'm very grateful to the department for doing that this year. And uh, obviously that lowered the cost for the parish tremendously. So yeah, we, yeah, that's, a, that's one something that's very nice under Father John Finley. We're trying to offer these retreats and meet parishes where they are. Every parish is in a different financial situation. Some can afford all of it. Some can afford some of it. And some can't really afford much of it, but they really should get that retreat anyways. They're in, sometimes the ones who can't afford it really need it the most. Um, and so it's been very, very nice to be under Father John Finley's leadership in making sure we we meet those needs where a, a priest would like a retreat, uh, but it's it's gonna, looks impossible financially. So thank you for mentioning that. Thank you for coming on today. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll we'll keep in touch. My pleasure. I hope so. Thank you. God bless. God bless you.